So now that the Sea Monsters Crisis event is pretty much done with the main story, we're in the post, you know, epilogue era where you can farm the copies of Tai Sui, I could put out my video talking about him, and he's not really anything special, but he's also not the worst free-to-play I've seen. I don't know, he's a very weird character to talk about. Because sometimes when I bring him to farms to try to get footage for the video, he just wasn't able to get it done barely, which is a bit strange, but I understand that his NP hits are a little bit more limited, so maybe that's why he's not so good in those areas, but he does also seem to be a bit better in the actual boss fights because he gives more party utility and has debuffs and stuff on his NP. He is a really weird servant for me to evaluate because He's one of those AoE but CQ type servants, which I think are always really awkward. It's kind of like Takeda Shingen, where he has a really good boss fighting kit, but he's also like an AoE buster with a 50% battery, so you'd want to use him for farming, but he has low damage. It's one of those situations where it's a really awkward servant. Now, he is a free-to-play, so there is a little bit more wiggle room, I suppose, because you do get him at free NP5, but... Even at NP5, his damage is lower than an NP1 Okita Alter, which is never the place that you really want to be at. One of the strengths of free-to-play servants is the fact that you do get them at a free NP5, and usually they can start out-damaging some of the gacha servants because they just have free NP5 going for them. But I guess he also does have the man attribute. We'll talk about that in this video and more. But if you like your daily FGO content, make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel because sometimes, like in this video here, I have to deliberate a lot on how I'm going to tackle a particular servant because they're just so weird and quirky. So the support would be greatly appreciated. And in this one especially, please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I would love to gauge community response on this free to play, especially if you played the original Sea Monsters Crisis over on the JP side of things and you've been playing around with Taisway for the last two years. So without further ado, let's just start diving into this one. So I'm actually not going to focus too much on his cards right now because I think the strengths of Taisway more come from his skills and his NP, and the cards aren't as relevant, I would say, because he's an art servant. So even though he has lower NP gain at 0.47%, you're going to bring him with Castoria, who's going to juice up that NP gain, and he has ways to cover that himself. So starting off with the first skill, it's a 20% party-wide arts buff, 20% party-wide NP gain buff, and 10 stars every turn for 3 turns on a 6 turn cooldown, which I really like. If you guys know me and how I like to talk about DPS that support the party, this is the way that I like to see it. Providing stars for not only himself, but maybe other units if you're bringing another pseudo DPS, but then buffing things that are meaningful for the other supports. Because, you know, Castoria getting an attack buff from your main DPS from their Charisma skill doesn't really do anything for her. But giving her an Arts buff and an NP gain buff does help her out a lot because the Arts performance buff is buffing the NP gain of the Arts cards. And then that NP gain rate that he's giving everybody is further increasing that for all cards. So you can really help out the consistency in your Proto Merlins, your Tamamos, your Merlins, your Castorias in finding their own NPs when you're doing your your arch chain so it's a very strong skill and dare i say it might be his best skill because it just does a lot for him and the entire party i really like the skill i think it's very well built but it does have some decent competition you look at his second skill this is prime survivability skill this looks really insane on paper you're getting a 3k guts that is targetable so it's not just for himself if your castoria your tamamo whatever have you is about to go down or if taisway himself is about to go down you can pass this off to somebody else they get the guts the one instance of debuff immunity and buff removal resistance for one time for three turns which is insanely good it means that even if he goes he passes it on to somebody else and say on a break bar the boss is going to try to remove all of your buffs or they're going to try to remove all of your buffs when they fire an np whatever have you you know they're going to resist that they're not going to be able to have their buffs removed and they have a little safety blanket with the guts and with the debuff immunity which is very very strong and then there's his third skill which is again another strong skill it seals all enemy skills for one turn gives him a 30 percent np damage buff which plays very nicely with oberon because when you have your own np damage buff much less a high end np damage buff his third skill absolutely loves that 
and then he gives himself a 30% battery. The only thing that's a little annoying is that if you want to use him as, say, a farming servant, you really want to have this up for all three waves because without it, his damage is really poo-poo stinky and you don't like that. So you want to fire this, but you also want to save the battery because his NP gain and his hits on his NP aren't the best. So it does leave him in a bit of an awkward position. But aside from that, from farming, it's really good into CQs because you can just fire this immediately, get a little bit of extra juice, get some damage, seal all their skills, and start off looking pretty. So his skills are all very strong, and even his NP is very strong. I mean, you could already see on the overcharge, he's giving himself a man attribute power mod, which if you've ever used Morgan, you know that's really good. There's quite a few not only servants, but also random enemies, you know, mobs that have the man attribute that you can slam into. And his damage actually starts to get pretty decent if he gets the man attribute power mod. Because again, you don't really care about his NP 1 through 4 damage. He's a free to play. You just look at his NP 5 damage and he's really getting up there when he has that man power mod. But then on top of that, his NP every single time he's hitting the enemy is going to reduce their defense by 20% for three turns. So it ramps up the damage every single time he fires it. In theory, he's an art servant, so you should keep spamming the NP and doing more and more damage. The fact that he also inflicts curse on the enemy and it activates first means that whenever we get the curse power mod ce in about two years over here on na he's going to be even better with that as well because he'll get the curse power mod as soon as he does damage so technically he could have double power mods and reducing the enemy's defense by like 60 percent by the third np which sounds really crazy on paper until you start to read between the lines first and foremost you see the 20 percent defense down that he has on the enemy that's actually a little disingenuous. He That only occurs on the enemy when he's defeated. See, he gives himself a little bit of a buff or debuff, whatever you want to say, called Ticeway's Misfortune, that whenever he's beaten, he reduces the enemy party's defense by 20% for three turns, and then hits him with a bunch of curse stacks. Now, you could still do the funny combo with the curse power mod CE and his own curse, because that is not tied to the Misfortune at all, and it still will proc first, which is very nice, but it is unfortunate that you actually don't get the ramping damage, which is a bit peculiar because a lot of servants already kind of have that as a thing. You know, they will give a servant, oh, you can reduce their card resistance or their defense or whatever have you by 20% for X amount of turns, and it gives them a little bit more ramping damage. So even though their first turn NP might not be super impressive, by the time you get a couple of those building up, you're really starting to hit the enemy quite hard. But for some reason, they didn't give that to Ticeway. I almost wish that when he was beaten, it was a little more worth because the 20% defense down probably should just already be built into the NP at base. And then maybe if he's defeated, he drains the entire party's like NP gauge or he hits him with a fat attack down, like lowers their attack by 50% for three turns. Something like that I think is a bit more fitting and would work him better to being a CQ oriented servant that actually had good buffs if he were to go down. But it's also a little bit weird because even though you don't have to give himself his own survivability buffs, he has a gut. So if you want him to get defeated to bring in another guy, I guess you just use the second skill as a targetable skill instead. It's just a little wonky to me. Not to say that he's bad, but it's just a very weird design for a free to play servant, if that kind of makes sense, which is why towards the beginning of the video, I was asking for input in the comments down below based on other people that may have more experience with this servant because admittedly while i have used tai sway a bit i don't have like a breadth of experience using this guy it's not one of the servants i'm more familiar with because it's just kind of clunky to use and i'd rather use somebody else as my primary dps especially someone that might actually be a single target even though the man attribute power mod is very tantalizing I might just stick with the bread and butter of using someone like Melusine or using the Dio Scurry twins, you know, someone like that that just has a simple yet effective kit rather than trying to plan around getting one of my guys defeated and trying to micromanage me passing buffs off to other people. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think he's rather solid, like maybe a B tier servant after using him a little bit more since the free to play tier list I did a couple of months ago, but I think he might sit comfortably in B tier, maybe like B plus. I think I've started to sour on him a little bit as he's gotten over here on the NA version of the game, but not soured on him completely. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, late guys.